We want to welcome everyone today to our presentation of ins and outs using simulation to teach bovine artificial insemination. Uh, thank you for taking the time with us today. And um, we're going to get right started, uh, started right now on um, kind of just walking you through uh, our bovine breeder product, which I have next to me here, but also to just talk about um, uh, some of the main things that you may want some, some um, takeaways for uh, teaching bovine artificial insemination. So to get started with, um, when you're talking about bovine artificial insemination, a lot of times um, some examples can be uh, classroom instruction. Um, going and doing the, uh, you know, if it's a PowerPoint slide, if it's information, if it's a textbook, uh, and just training through um, understanding of uh, both the, the um, uh, cow and bull reproduction and the, the system of uh, the female reproduction system for bovine. Um, a lot of times that can be through PowerPoint slides, that can be through workbooks, that can be through um, different uh, YouTube videos and things of that nature. Uh, and what we see a lot of times is then moving into kind of a, a uterus uh, uh, sample training. Uh, you can get these uh, from different, um, you know, online. You can buy different uh, cow uteruses. Uh, sometimes you can get them from the butcher. You can get them from um, maybe even from uh, uh, different places that uh, um, do, um, if you're, you know, talking to different farmers, once they're going to go bring a butcher, you can get them from them. But you have some sort of uterus uh, um, sample training. What we would like to talk about today is then, um, that's kind of where you go until you hit and get to a actual farm setting and get out and uh, look at um, the, the animals themselves. In this case, our bovine breeder simulation is a different way to look at and to use, um, the, to get students from the classroom, uh, not being able to go out to the, to the farm, but being able to actually uh, simulate um, artificial insemination in the classroom and helping in that case. And then you also have the live ability to do that as well. You can go to a farm if you have it on your class in, in your school farm um, and actually do live uh, practice. That's not always the easiest thing to do. And a lot of times you don't have that ability, but want to talk through some of these things because uh, for example, with our uterus samples is students can enjoy them. Um, but we also have a, uh, cow uterus model that does the same thing as um, the live sample showing the um, parts of it it's stretched out so it's a it's a more of a life-size um, version of the whole reproductive track and showing the cervix showing the different folds showing how you go through into the uh, cow uterus um, a lot of times then and what we're going to be talking about today is um, going into simulation world the bovine breeder artificial inseminator is a kind of the back end of a cow allowing you to uh, train on the importance of uh, proper technique, but then also pregnancy palpation, both um, uh, testing if the cow is in heat and ready for AI to happen. And then also um, once the, the animal is pregnant, uh, checking for that pregnancy as well. So a lot of times, and these are some pictures of, of it in action, um, simulated practice can be a best uh, form to get students to understand, understand the technique, be able to not just see it in the classroom with that classroom instruction time, but also do it, actually go in and see the simulated uh, practice and trying it, seeing what they do right, what are some uh, things that they need to work on in that case. And then there's also the live practice as well. Actually getting them to a farm is, is probably that uh, best opportunity, but a lot of times you don't get that, um, that chance. Uh, either the, the farmer doesn't want you to bring uh, and have your students be doing it on their cows, or um, it's just there's liabilities, things of that nature. So there is that want for live practice, but can you do it in a, uh, a way that you simulate and you understand it first before you do the live thing? So let's talk about some artificial insemination kind of 101, some main topics. So the importance of AI is the um, acceptance of it. It has been proven uh, for different things. And, and one of the reasons why, why the question is, why would you artificially inseminate instead of just do natural uh, breeding? In this case, sometimes it is a genetic uh, focus. So you can actually uh, change the herd of your, um, of your uh, cattle by the um, 
semen that you use and bringing in a, a different type of quote unquote bull that could, can give different type of uh, genetics um, to your herd that you may want. It's also um, uh, good, you can get sexted semen. And so you can actually change the dynamics of your herd um, through that way as well. Um, there's also ability to uh, do some um, sinking in the, uh, um, in the cycle of the cow and also um, work towards embryo harvesting as well, um, depending on uh, if that's something you're interested. It also helps because you can freeze, you can culture, and you can transfer um, semen. And so by doing those things, you then can change the dynamics of your herd and even the production of your herd based on uh, being able to artificial inseminate. So if you have a bull there, you know, that's fine. But the problem with that is, is maybe you're not getting um, the best out of what you, what you could be. And so changing some of those genetics can be very important to, to your herd. Now, some signs of heat just to kind of uh, show some different things here. And part of this is that the time in heat is very different. And so one of the problems with artificial insemination, especially in bovine, is that their um, heat averages are very small compared to other animals. Uh, so dogs can be two to four weeks. Uh, cats um, a week or a few days. Uh, and then it kind of gets shorter and shorter to um, really being able to make sure that you catch that animal when they are in heat, ready to be impregnated. And the problem is you can see bovine is at the bottom there. It's around roughly 15 hours. And when we break it down a little bit more, um, we'll talk about how uh, you can kind of tell where that's not a lot of time for you to be um, sh working with that animal. So you want to be able to make sure that um, you get that animal bred when it comes time. So some early signs here are increased locomotion, some restlessness, um, some bellowing, nervous nips. They attempt to mount other animals. Uh, and, and there's a lot of times a watery discharge as well, mucousy discharge that can come. And so you can start to see that that animal is um, getting close to being um, in heat. They're not receptive to the male yet, but they are interested. And that's where you can start to first see that um, and get that understanding. Now, the, the time that you notice it most is that when they get to that standing heat, they're able to be mounted, they're very friendly. A lot of times they will not eat or they will decrease in their food consumption. Um, there is that mucus buildup and, and um, they are seen, if you, you are watching and close it, um, uh, focusing that their volvo lips get red and swollen, that mucus discharge becomes a little clearer, and you can tell, yep, they are ready to actually be bred. Now, if you wait too long then, and again, as you kind of think back to that 15 hour time span that you're in, well, at some point then all of a sudden, they're not gonna stand to be mounted. They don't wanna be around um, uh, cows, other cows, um, and a lot of times they are getting to a point where they um, have a bloody discharge and you can kind of tell that, yep, we missed that, that time in, in that animal. And so um, just to kind of show some different examples here is we have these uh, seasonal effects as well. So you can tell from breed to breed, your standing events are different. Um, Holsteins here in Jersey are two different animals, uh, two different breeds of cows that we put up here. And you can see that they're standing um, time that they're kind of ready to, or giving you that notice that they're they're getting closer to being ready to breed is uh, very different. And again, in the winter, a lot of times it's a longer period. In the summer, it's much shorter. That has to do with that heat and that cold. Um, and so really kind of looking at what does those effects have and, and then when will you be able to breed in that sense. And again, kind of going back to what we talked about, the average length of the estrus um, cycle is 21 days. Okay. But the duration is really about 15 hours that you can actually go ahead and um, uh, inseminate. Now that can range um, as well. So 15 hours is that average. So sometimes it's much shorter, sometimes it's much longer, but um, at, on a good average, it's about 24 hours or less is what you can say. Now, if you look at that, that means that you have to understand what you're doing. You have to be aware of what that cow is, when it's in heat, when it's ready to be bred, but also you have to understand the cycle and how it works. And so just to kind of show here, 
what we have included here is this is kind of the cycle that the cow will have where the ovary is um, becoming ready to um, is getting into heat and it's ready to it has a follicle but it's not in that cl or the corpus luteum stage yet um, you get into that day four or five uh, nine and ten and twelve now you're into that um, kind of uh, area where, yes, we're getting closer to actually being ready to um, breed that animal. And so we have a CL1, CL2, and it's not until about day 18, um, where uh, 16 to 18, someplace in there, you're ready to actually breed, to artificially inseminate. And so you have to really be aware of what you're doing with um, the animal and when is it ready to actually be bred. So this is very important. We'll talk about that in a little bit, about when it's ready to bred and making sure that you know if it is ready to be bred when you're actually doing. So let's talk about some of the artificial insemination procedures. So again, our bovine breeder is an insemination simulator. It gives the opportunity to actually do the um, correct technique of artificially inseminating. And I'll be showing you that in just a little bit here. So this is an example. This was off of um, uh, a uh, Twitter account where we were able to see um, students doing this in the classroom, gaining the understanding of doing it correctly before they would actually do the real thing. So a lot of what I'm going to be showing you now is actual process or uh, um, presentation slides um, and the process of artificial insemination. Um, and we've, I've taken this right from our curriculum, right from the curriculum that comes with bovine breeder. We give you uh, lessons on correct insemination technique um, and, and walking you through and your students through all this. So um, we can talk about the male reproductive system and how we get the semen from uh, the male, but what we're really focusing on is the female. And so in this case, what we really want to uh, get students to understand is that it is the cervix that we have to work and get through. In this case, um, you can move up to the cervix pretty well, but the cervix is kind of that gatekeeper for any type of bacteria, any type of foreign object, or um, uh, any type of um, uh, liquid to get through into the uterine horns and then ultimately to the ovaries. So in this case, you have to make sure you can get through the cervix. And when you go inside and you're actually looking for that in the uh, when you're uh, doing AI, you have to be looking for, and it's the cervix that is kind of a, a different feel than the rest of the reproductive tract that you're looking for that will help you to understand and, and be able to um, then manipulate through to get to where you need to go. So the big thing here that students need to know is um, semen is deposited in, into the uterine body um, and it reaches the, the ovary oviducts uh, pretty quickly. Um, but it still takes about six hours from when you deposit it to actually get to and um, actually uh, um, connect and then create that uh, um, a pregnancy in that sense. So the sperm can live up to about 24 hours, but it takes about six hours for the uh, female to become fertile once you've actually deposited um, the sperm into that. Now the difference too between AI and standard or natural breeding is natural breeding, it's, it's all about quantity. It's the bull just getting as much as possible into it and some of it getting past the cervix and then getting into the uh, uterine horns. In artificial insemination, you don't have that quantity. You are focused on quality. You have to get through that cervix to then be able to um, do the actual insemination. So now in this case here, another focus just to have uh, your students kind of think about is the semen deposit by trained inseminators here. That when you do this, um, one of the things that you can look at, and, and this is study results of studies that where you dep deposit the semen is very important. If you put it in the uterine body, it then has the ability to go down both um, uterine horns. So that is where you're going to be the most successful. If you just put it in the cervix, uh, someplace in the cervix, some sperm will be able to get through, the semen will be able to get through, and that does have an opportunity. If you just put it in one or the other um, uterine horns, what will happen a lot of times is that it may be the wrong place for you to be depositing that um, sperm. It, the ovary that is ready, uh, maybe the CL3 might be on the other side. And so it's not as effective. So you want to make sure you're putting it in the uterine body. So these are all diagram sheets right from our curriculum. Um, in the pink here is our uh, 
track that you're going to want to go through, the reproductive track. Above is the anus where you're going to actually put your arm in and go in. And so locating this, uh, the track, it can be over to one side. Usually it is um, kind of over on the, the right side, sometimes more than it is on the left side, but it is going to be in this region here uh, uh, and kind of in the opening right inside of the um, pelvic uh, area there. So in this case, um, you are going to want to reach in with your hand. There is going to be um, uh, feces there and, and you're going to want to manure that you're going to want to move out of the way either by moving out or going underneath it so you are aligned on the bottom of the rectum. You're going to want to then reach in when you put the pipette, the AI pipette into the cervix and kind of feel it along. Make sure that it is where you want to be. In this case, you want to be above a kind of a around a 45 degree angle as you're pushing through. So then you're not going down into um, the bladder. You wanna make sure you're staying away from that. Then as you go in, you're going to connect and hit the cervix and wanting to move in through the cervix and then actually go underneath. And you can see that your hand is actually holding that cervix as you go through. Looking then as you're in the cervix for the end of the cervix where you put your finger down trying to feel the end of that AI pipette or the AI gun wanting to then make sure that you are um, in the correct position. Um, after you're there, that is when, when you can actually feel, and moving back just a little bit here, when I can feel that gun at the very end, that is where I'm going to want to then release the sperm into the um, uterine body here. And again, the uterine body, as we saw before, is the best place to put it because then it can go into both um, uh, sides of the oviduct and into the uterine horn and then down to the um, uh, the ovaries. So in this case, species that have and use AI, a lot of times dairy cows, beef cows is becoming more and more a big, big part, swine, and then equine um, goats and sheep and, and turkeys and chickens as well, in, especially in production of th those animals. So um, before we get into proper palpation, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to just go ahead and show you uh, live uh, how we actually do this. And so I have the bovine breeder here um, in place. And again, what the bovine breeder has is it has a cover so I can actually put the hide over it, but I've opened it up so we can use it as a demonstrator and a teaching piece here. In this case, a lot of times you take the tail and you put that over behind you so it's out of the way. And in this case, you have the rectum here. And what I'm gonna do is we have um, what we call our, our feces or our fake poop bags here. And what we're gonna take those out because you wanna have a nice clean area where when I'm getting my hand in here to be able to come down and look for um, the cervix. Now, inside here, we have the um, track itself. We have the bladder, so you have to be careful that you don't go down in the bladder. That's why, in this case, you want to stay 45 degree angles and stay right along the top. And then we have the cervix here, where in our model, it is clear. This allows you, from a teaching point, to be able to teach how the cervix kind of has three rings and you have to go through the folds and then get into your landing area here, which is at the very end to be able to see. So in this case, when I have my gun here, you're going to want to go into our uh, the vagina, go across the top, and again, I can feel where I am here. And then as I get a little bit closer, I then can feel that I have hit the cervix. Now in this case here, I have three different rings that I have to move and manipulate through. The problem that a lot of students will have is that they will try to jam it in. That can be very dangerous because it can hurt the cervix of the animal. It could ruin it that they wouldn't be able to um, be able to be bred anymore. The other side that you have to be careful of is as you push through is you may get into a fold. And so you have to back up and then move forward. And when I am done then, if I put my finger on top and I can kind of push down, I can then see and also feel, ah, yes, I have gotten to the right place. And in this case, I then just have to push in and I have inseminated the, the animal. All right, now that's just kind of a quick little overview, but there's a lot of different training pieces that you can use with this product 
with your students to be able to show that, allowing them to be able to do that type of um, um, training in that, that world. Now, that is just the kind of overview of how this product can work and what it actually um, does. I want to go back then as we were working before and talk about proper pregnancy palpation. Another big piece of this and making sure your students understand is not only can you artificially inseminate, but if you're doing it at the wrong time, you're wasting time, you're wasting money. So it's very important that you actually do pregnancy checks and not only pregnancy checks, but also corpus luteum checks to make sure that your animal is ready to be bred. Now, why is this important? Because if you don't do this, you, um, if you do this, then you can reduce feed costs because if they're not pregnant, you don't have to feed them um, like they are pregnant. Um, you can also tighten your calving season by making sure that they are um, uh, pregnant or ready to be pregnant. Um, the calving intervals can be tightened so you can have more calves uh, from this cow or you can return it to service in a quicker amount of time. You can confirm for sales when it's time that, yep, I have this many um, animals that are pregnant, so then I should have this many calves ready to go. Um, and then also you, could, you should be able to determine what animals are, are not getting pregnant, why they aren't, and maybe um, in that sense, um, uh, get them out of the, the, herd, the um, breeding herd. Um, and then as soon as you determine if they are pregnant or not pregnant, you should start um, preparing for to do it again. And so that, that is also important rather than wasting time thinking that they might be. So in this case here, again, different views, but actually going in, going down and then checking to see if the animal is pregnant. And so what we have is we have um, our uh, pregnancy palpation parts that include a corpus luteum one, two, and three. In this case, each time they are getting bigger and then you can actually see how it is starting to change. So then you can actually go in and palpate um, as you are uh, looking. And then we also have a fetal development. So a pregnancy, once you have gotten a uh, cow pregnant, you have the four week and then an eight week. So you can actually do, um, see how that is, is going to go. So again, our corpus luteum is checking, okay, where are they in this um, stage? So you can actually put the CL1 into the bovine breeder and have students go in and be able to tell, oh, they're at probably day four or five, they're not ready to be inseminated. Oh, CL2, they're closer to 9, 10, uh, maybe 11, 12. And then, oh, we're ready now in that 14, 15, 16 time frame because I can feel the corpus luteum. It is probably at a three. It's time to actually do it. Saving a lot of time and energy in that world. So I um, want to just kind of uh, show a little bit of that as well. I have our um, different insemination I'm sorry, our pregnancy palpation pieces here. And so you actually have these that are different sizes. And with each different size, as they get bigger and bigger, you can actually see them. And then you can talk about it. But the great piece of this is you can actually put them and they actually stick inside here um, where you can actually put them into the uh, um, the you don't horn, so then when I come in, I can reach down and I can palpate that. I can reach over, palpate, find, okay, where are they actually, um, what uh, are they in? What uh, um, stage are they actually in? Now, we also have our four week, which is kind of a, a little bit bigger than um, a large bean, I guess you could say. And then we have our eight week as well. These are, are important, so then you can also tell, okay, put these inside here and then go in and palpate just like you did before. By doing that, it allows you then to be able to say, oh, wow, look, it, it did work. They are pregnant. Now, what's my protocol for pregnancy? Or it didn't work, and I need to um, then start again in the um, insemination process. So fetal development stages, again, what are you feeling for? about 30 to 35 days, you're feeling um, that embryo there, and it's about a, a quarter, or I'm sorry, a half inch in diameter. So a lot of times, one it will be in one horn or the other, so making those students go down and, and feel both horns to see, okay, what is actually going on there. Uh, four to five days, horn with the, a fetus is somewhat larger, okay, 
roughly one inch. And then at 60 days, you're at about your eight week period there. And your fetus is now bigger, um, size of a mouse. Um, and you can see that it is um, displaced in the abdomen cavity. And so the uterus is starting to change its form and its shape, but you can go down and actually feel, oh yes, there's a little bit different um, shape. It is now pregnant, it is at that. And so you're moving into that world and making sure that it's good. Nine days, um, it's starting to get larger and then it continues on getting larger and larger um, as you go until you're ready to actually um, uh, deliver the animal. So again, the bovine breeder, artificial inseminator, is something that helps you to, to get your students to be able to um, grasp the concepts, understand the technique, do the technique, practice the technique, and then get the whole overall view with when do I need to artificial inseminate? How do I do it? Why do I do it? What's the importance of doing it? And then making sure that, yep, I do it correctly every single time. The great piece about our cervix in the, in the bovine breeder is that it actually can be changed. So then every single time a student does it, those rings can be moved and then it's like a new cervix. It's a different cervix. Just like every cow has a different cervix, our rings can be moved, allowing for different variances. So then students have to work um, at understanding and getting through that cervix um, to get to the correct place for artificial insemination. So with that being said, I thank you for your time. If there are any questions, feel free to um, ask them or you can go online at realityworks.com and look at our product, see what our product does. We do have videos there, we do have um, other options there. Um, and so this is there for you um, to be able to um, kind of, uh, um, see if this is something that would work for you, as well as our product includes curriculum. It includes uh, teacher um, guides. It walks through proper technique for the student. And then it comes with all the features that you see here, making sure that students understand proper welding, uh, excuse me, proper um, uh, um, insemination. So with that, I wanna say thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, uh, direct them. You can go right to realityworks.com um, or you can uh, email at um, information at realityworks.com and love to um, answer any questions or help you with anything. We also be sending this video um, and any other information that you might need um, for uh, joining us today. So thank you for your time.